All right, guys, stress levels are slightly higher than average today. It's because we're playing on the live stream, we're playing 5, 10, 20, and we're playing in Texas. So 5, 10, 20, guaranteed to be deceiving, probably gonna play massive. Uh, room looks amazing here at Texas Card House, Dallas. They have like a million tables and there's like two million people here uh, playing poker. Stream room is just back here. We'll cut to that next. Your boy here is gonna be buying in for $5,000. I'll have one or two rebuys available in me before throwing in a towel if more than that is required. But uh, stepping it up in stakes here a little bit. Let's hope for some run good. Let's get in the mix and start firing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday night, TCH Live. It's a very special episode of TCH Live. It's a 5, 10, 20, no limit hold'em with our very good friends, Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi, everyone's favorite, favorite vlogger extraordinaires. My name's Ben Kirby. I'm here with my esteemed co-host, Greg Potter. What is up, Greg? What's up, Ben? We got a lot of energy in here. A lot of energy in here indeed. And a lot of money in the middle in pot number one. There's no skill involved in this hand. The boys are just looking to kick the gambling off right away. Everyone puts $250 in the middle before the cards are dealt. We all get four cards and the best poker hand at the river scoops it all. I actually get dealt a premium Omaha hand, double suited kings, but the flop has us down to an 8% chance to win. The turn gives us a lot of life in the form of the nut diamond draw, and it keeps getting better as we end up making the nuts on the river. There's $2,500 in the middle that's all getting pushed our way here. Speaking of Andrew, my God, he's winning the peel. He's already running good here at uh, TCH Live. In Dallas, we did a uh, $250 PLO flip you guys and it looks like he's gonna take it down with the runner runner nut flush there for 2500 bucks 2500 dollars already going to mr nimi but it is an interesting different dynamic where all the players basically get to see get to see uh, the cards 15 get minutes to later see everything which is actually awesome in this hand scott comes in for the raise in the plus three position we have queen ten of clubs in the cutoff and definitely want to get involved we could three bet or we could flat and with this being a no rake environment and playing 10 handed, I think it makes sense to lean towards flatting preflop with our borderline hands. Brad comes along for the big blind and we go three ways to the flop. Flop is super ragged and with no clear range advantage, Scott looks to keep the betting lead with a C bet. We have three to a straight, three to a flush, an overcard, and the power of position. So I think we can find a float here. I actually like Andrew's decision to peel here a lot. No help on the turn, probably not going to get... Uh, much more out of Andrew here if Scott ever doesn't barrel. If Andrew did his research, he would probably know Scott ever Scott's capable of doing a complete bluff here with air. On the turn, once we get checked to, even though we have total air and no removal, we have queen high. So it's probably a pretty neutral EV bet, but betting is for sure more fun than checking down queen high. Andrew yeah. got game. <laughs> We've seen it. We know it. Everyone here knows nice it. Nice bet there from Nimi, yep. uh, resident of Las Vegas, as is brad owen roundhouse kicked that like button for us continue do to do so it's tch live it's tuesday night and things are getting out of hand it's ben oh, and greg it's... in the booth with you tonight brad and andrew as ben mentions in the booth we're playing 5 10 20 40 in this hand but if you add all that money up it comes to 75 dollars so it's actually more like we're playing 25 50 at this point but with four blinds instead of the two that's important to consider because effective stack sizes are a little shallower than at first glance. It also incentivizes four players to defend preflop rather than just the typical two. I think that stuff is interesting in this hand where Nate limps in ahead of me before we look down at 9-8 of spades. If I'm first into the pot, I'm always coming in for a raise, but I think an overlimp here makes sense for all the previously mentioned reasons. Again, we're 10-handed, so we're likely to see at least a raise and often a 3-bet at this table. Not surprisingly, Kyle finds a raising hand and makes it $225 to go. Folds back over to us limpers and Nate decides to let it go, but we're happy to see a flop with a suited connector. LZ three bet, three betting a little light here with the ace check offsuit. I'm gonna try and get some Andrew's money. Andrew going nowhere, flops, gigantic. Wow. And we thought pretty well here, but I think Kyle still probably has a small range advantage. The only two pair hand we'd have is Jack 10 and the only set is the bottom one. Whereas Kyle could probably have all of that plus the other two sets and the over pairs. Andrew's going to come right along. Very standard. 
Wow, spikes it. Straight flush draw. Spikes it. He's got the straight flush draw on the turn. Checks it over to Kyle Z, who does like to check it back. He knows that queen is terrible for so, him. I mean, he turns the queen ah, nice straight, and the nine's going to kill all no, his action. No, that's a terrible card. Andrew does not like that card. Checks it over. Yep, yep. This does not slow roll at all, which I respect a lot. Snap shows it. I have the nuts, or the effective the nuts. The effective nuts, yeah. Yeah, not the literal nuts for all you chat <laughs> you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear about that in the chat. I'm sure I will. Quickly. Yeah, pretty, pretty wild. And so the 40 pretty looks wild. like they might be doing a round of 40. Andrew here. Pocket eights, 125 under the gun. $40 straddle still on, and we find pocket eights first to act. I make it 125 to go. Folds all the way around to Nate, who makes the call. Heads up to the flop, and we find bottom set on a super wet and connected board. Nate hops out of flow and leads into us, which is very interesting. I definitely think that play has a lot of merit, since he has a blocker to the straight and a good draw. We have a decision between raising and flatting, and again, I think both have merit. Nate is likely to always going to have very good hands and or very good draws here. So I decided to see what happens on the next street before committing stacks. Phase from Nimi and wow. Because Nimi knew. He knew that the seven was coming. What an awful card. Nate now turns the straight with the redraw to a higher straight. Andrew knows that that card is not great for him. On the turn, I think Nate is almost always going to have a straight since it's tough to lead into an opponent with four to a straight on board without the goods. And maybe the rest of the time he'll have the occasional flush draw for his bluffs. Hating that turn, but having 34% versus straights and assumedly good implied odds, we're going to need to see a river. Up here, I think. And he's getting about the right odds to do so. Andrew coming along with, with the set of eights here. Ten pairs, on the, the, pairs the board. Pairs the board, oh, giving Andrew a boat. Baby. You get a boat. If you have a vlog, you get a boat. <laughs> Nimi right. gets a boat. Owen gets a boat. Oh, Everybody's got man. a boat. So a big call there on wow. the turn leads to really paying off here. Wow. Oh my Eight's gosh. Full of tens. And Nate is going big with the straight here. 1,200. Andrew now just wondering how to get all the money in the middle. What size is he going to use? Oh, my gosh. So what do you do here for Andrew? Do you polarize and ship here? Or do I you, like, mean, then click it? What do you do? Given that Nate's only got another 5K behind, it wouldn't be outlandish to ship it here. Uh, I think you could probably still go for some value here, raised to, like, 3K. Oh, there you, oh, that's definitely what it is. <laughs> my God. Uh, also, a $5 super chat from – I saw – sorry. And from, a raise. It looks like he did go for the 3K size. Trevor Gentry, I got you here. I love 2.8K, even a little less – Trying to go for the calls it off. I got a boat, son. What? What do y'all want? What more huge, do you want? Huge, huge pot. Huge pot. Seventy-two hundred US TCH dollars headed over to Andrew Nimi. He's got. Looking back, I actually think we should probably just raise all in on the river. It seems unlikely that Nate has anything other than a straight or a bluff on the turn, so we should have a pretty big range advantage when the board pairs, having all of the full houses. If I ever have less in this spot, I should go big. So I think a polarizing bet makes more sense. My raise size probably isn't bad necessarily since it gets paid off more often, but we could probably find a higher EV sizing to go with. But how much can you really complain when you just won the biggest pots in the entire vlog? Oh, I think you said you played huge with Jack. I was like, yeah, you guys played pretty big on the bike. <laughs> to, uh, to Dallas. Um, I played with him here. I think one of my, one of the hands I was involved in was featured on the vlog. I don't remember exactly, but in this hand, there's a raise from early position and one call before we find Jack nine of diamonds on the button. Definitely playable in position, maybe in a different formation or less players at the table. We'd find some three bets with this hand, but a flat seems pretty standard here. And the third blind calls two. suited and Umid in the blinds nine eight suited all very natural calls I think. 10 3 3 on the flop. Very dry board texture. Flop is super dry here, and we don't see any bets. With backdoor equity, I think a check or a bet is usually good, but when it gets to four plus ways in a hand, I tend to play a little more straightforward and elect to check here. Best of it by a mile. I'm actually surprised we didn't see a C bet here. And uh, diamonds Ooh, pick up. Huge turn on. card here for huge Andrew. Huge turn card. Now, open ended with a diamond draw. Uh, we've got Umid with second pair, decent kicker. We turn the nut card as far as that backdoor equity goes. Umid leads out for a bet, and when it folds over to me, raising or flatting has merit, but we'd essentially be repping just a three that for some reason didn't bet the flop, and there's also no reason why Umid couldn't have a three himself. I call, and we're off to a river. Uh, second pair here with the 9-8. Heads up to a river. 
three on the river. So Umid actually boats up. Oh, wow, he Three's sure full of eights, Threes. and Andrew's just got nothing. The third three on the board is a total brick and not a scare card at all. There aren't any value hands that I can come up with to represent. So I think we're at the mercy of the runout here and just going to have to take the jack high to show down this time. Yep, he does He does elect to give it up here with just the jack high. I think um, given that he didn't bet the flop, it's pretty hard to believe that he's going to have something better than an eight. Um, uh, and it's going to be pretty hard to believe that he's going to have a 10 there or any sort of boat whatsoever. So I do like decision uh, Andrew's decision to go ahead and check back there. I think that was uh, good. It's not, not, there are better spots to, to bluff, and I think he just called trying to realize – all of his equity, and unfortunately, he did not. I think that's just kind of life. Yeah. Yep. You know, that's that's part of the game. Wanted to clarify real quick. We usually play two five on Wednesday nights. Five ten twenty in this hand, and we find a suited ace to raise from the plus two position. Umid finds two cards of the same suit, so he makes the call from the cutoff, and Zach finds two cards that are next to each other to call from the small blind with. Three ways to a king high flop, which is typically pretty favorable for the pre flop raiser. We do have a couple backdoor draws, so I fire a bet of $100. This being the great state of Texas, we have to remember that ever since the Great Fire of 1896, which started in a saloon in downtown Dallas, everyone's fold buttons down here have been a little wonky. Umid calls with eight high, and Zach calls with his monster draw. Three ways to a turn that kills our backdoor dreams, so when it checks to me, I check it back. The river is a brick, and Umid gets after it with a bet of 150. Zach lets it go right away, and I'm for sure curious here, especially for that price. And if I knew that we were out here floating this wide multi-way, then ace high has to be a call for this price. But it's always much easier when you can see the cards and see what's going on than when you're at the table. That's that's the only thing only thing that I would uh, do that for um, such thin value there is, is, is a nine. But Umid still getting it done. You know, floor during the pandemic because they had Encore shut down for a lot of the time during the week. Mm -hmm. But they're back at the Encore room. Great. William Lottie, ten dollars super chat. It'd be here, great. Watch me here. I just knocked down. <laughs> oh, sweet! Some, Love uh, it. The blooper reel. Some beers there. Clip oh, that. No. <laughs> Glad that I'm in the booth for this. That's this hilarious. Is that in this hand, after Brad is done trashing the place, we see a raise from Peck, who was first to act, and he makes it seventy-five to go. There's three callers before action gets to me, and we look down at Ace King off suit. We have a pretty mandatory three bet here, so I go ahead and kick it up to $475. Back over to Peck now, who, seeing all these players who called his initial raise, and knowing that he can easily have the best hand out of all of us, including me, puts in the four bet to $1,700. Everyone else is going to get out of the way now, and it's back on us. This is a tricky spot with a few different factors at play. Peck is a very capable player. By that I mean he's clearly studied the game and he'll know that for every spot he'll want to have bluffs and value hands. So his range will of course have the hands that are crushing us, but he can certainly have an ace five suited or ace jack off suit type of hand here too. That really makes me want to rip it in. That's so much easier said than done though. Ripping it in is three small words that involves all $10,000 that are in my stack. I debate for a very long time going back and forth in my mind before eventually electing to flat call and take a flop. All in as well. Right. <clears throat> so if there's no ace or king on this board, then uh, it could be pretty easy for Peck to put out a C-bet and steal this Just one away take from it Andrew. Down. Yep, and that's one. I don't know. Uh, I it's don't know, dry though. enough, though, that ace king I was about to say, ace king still looks pretty primo on a board like this. You know Peck's never going to have a piece of it. Right. He and Andrew doesn't ripping. have much background with Peck, I'm assuming, and so he's not sure where he's at in this hand. He just called Peck's four bet. Peck's probably wondering if he can get a hand like, well, if he can get Ace King to fold, fold if he yeah. can get, you know, like what would Andrew do with like Queens and Jacks? Because yeah. Ace King, Queens, Jacks, Ace Queen suited. Oh, and he checks it back. Wow. 3,500 in this pot headed to a turn, seven of spades. Oh, so now man. Andrew's got an opportunity He's got here. an opportunity to steal it. He, he, yeah. he Once Peck checks back here, I mean, it's it's conceivable that Peck is going to maybe slow play some, some aces and kings, letting your opponent um, catch up a little bit. With the flop being so dry and while he'll probably mainly want to go for value, I think it's very reasonable for Peck to have some traps in his range and check back aces there. So I think my turn check is fine too. And 3.5K in the middle. 
I wonder what Andrew's plan is here. I mean, I guess he's he's communicating that he's given up. Uh, yeah, a little he bit. He might not be giving up, but he's, that's what yeah, he's kind of looks like they're check, both. Check. I think they're looks... both kind of giving it up here. Jack of spades on the river. Ooh. I think if anyone can rep this card more, it would be Andrew. Yeah, Andrew could definitely have jacks in his range. And uh, neither of them have a spade. Yeah, which is very interesting. If Andrew takes a stab at it here, no. Oh, man, I'm... On the river, with so much money at stake in our stacks, I'm mainly just trying to get the showdown. In hindsight, I think, as mentioned, I could maybe try and rep a hand on the river. But without a spade, I think a check is probably fine, too. And we have an anticlimactic end to a lot of preflop raises. But yeah. wah, wah. Catching up to the chat a little bit. Uh, Texas Card House will be operating the poker room, cash games, and tournaments. For In this hand, we see a raise from Scott, which is nothing out of the ordinary, and a call from Nate before we find King Queen offsuit and the hijack. We have some blockers to good hands, and I'm trying to get in the mix here for the stream where I can. So I'm going to take this opportunity to three bets at the worst possible time. Raising it four times. Raising it to three greens here. Nate calling Andrew three betting to three hundred. Probably getting a little bored. In the hijack? I mean, I really don't – I actually like this three bet a little bit. Honestly, it wouldn't have been crazy for him to go even bigger. And Umid going to try and set my own with the pocket fives. Uh, Zach – oh, I already mucked his cards. Skydiver, obviously loving life, going to put in an absolutely gigantic four Huge bet. Huge Oh, bet my here. God. And this has got to confuse oh, Andrew because is... he's seen Scott ever Scott have all these weird oh, hands. Man. Oh, he snap folded. No, I snap fold here. Oh, my God. We're just not going to be able to continue versus the 9X re-raise, however. Nice hand, Mr. Skydiver. I was just kidding. All right, so it's about 9 o'clock right now. I've been playing for three hours and probably play for another hour or so. Uh, I clearly ran very good in the beginning. Uh, I very skillfully won a flip before we started actual play. And then I uh, masterfully made a full house versus a straight. Those were the, uh, the two biggest uh, pot situations. Uh, mostly card dead. Uh, if you look at the stats, my numbers, like the aggression frequency and all those types of things are gonna be way down there. I'm not complaining. Uh, we're up, we're up money. So definitely not complaining. Gonna get back in there, try and find some more spots, mix it up. Smash the stack and no money comes off the table. So, uh, good segue, I think. I'm going to force the segue mm -hmm. as our uh, new friend Andrew Nimi. Mm -hmm. As our uh, new friend Andrew Nimi hops in the booth with us. Andrew, how's it going, man? It's been interesting. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen like my stats. I haven't really had hardly Eve. any premiums whatsoever. Yeah. Um, recently, I've tried to find like the occasional three bet spot to mix it up with, and the King I, Queen I with was King Queen ran into aces. Yep. <laughs> Love so it. brutal against the guy that could easily have nine deuce suited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, like I, I ran really well towards the start of this session. Sure did. And then uh, just you know, just been kind of hanging out. It's nice to win the, f the flip. Uh, uh, get say, the yeah. Say welcome to Dallas. You won our PLO flip there at imagine, the beginning. Imagine if I just like went back to Vegas after that one. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, you're no, like, all right, guys, thanks. See ya. Um, uh, right. Yeah, running at a net positive hourly. Yeah. Umid, under the gun, plus one, pocket threes. Playing 10, 20, 40 in this hand, and Umid limps in first to act before Scott raises the button. We have 5-4 suited in the big line, and typically this would probably be a fold. We're out of position and have a hand that will typically have a lot of reverse implied odds, especially in a multi-way pot. So even though Scott likes to play a lot of hands and we actually somehow have him dominated here, I think if I was completely detached from trying to keep my VPIP numbers up for the show, I'd just fold. But getting a discount on the big blind and again in a no rake environment, it can't be too bad to call. Oh wow, and Andrew flopping gigantic. Uh, Skydiver, bottom pair in a flush draw. Andrew, bottom two pair. Peck, ace high, and Umid. Action checks to Scott who C bets around half pot and it's on me. I have a choice between calling and raising. We started this hand almost $9,000 effective or about 225 big blinds. My thoughts at the time are that we flopped well and we need to have a raising range of sets, straights, two pairs, and then good combo draws for my bluffs. The main problem with being out of position in a dynamic hand like this is that I'm not going to have very good visibility on later streets. What I mean by that is that there are a lot of cards that could come where I won't know whether I'm still ahead or behind. In this kind of a spot versus the hands that Scott could conceivably see bet here into three opponents, bottom two pair is basically dead when it's behind, and when my two pair are ahead, it's not quite as drastically in my favor. 
I decided to play a flat call here and see what develops. Ooh, Ten of hearts on the not, turn. And you also want to deny equity to hard draws. So That's... Andrew here, bottom two versus Skydiver Scott, who turns a flush. Baby yep. flush. Baby flush, but he's got one. Either way, going for value here. I don't think Andrew can fold just yet. Turn is one of those many ugly cards, and we check it over to Scott, who continues with a bet of $700. Of course, we hate it, but having outs versus a flush and the possibility of Scott using this as a scare card, I agree that I don't think we can fold just yet. So a $700 bet. Andrew's got 8000 behind. Yep, and he does elect on a call here. I think that's fine. River if to full house last time. Maybe he can do it again. What? Oh, oh no. I was saying, I saw, I saw the pair. I saw a pair, but yeah, he he'll gets save some money now because of this paired board. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Skydiver, unbeknownst to him, uh, hates this card. Still got to go for value with the uh, four high flush. Twenty five hundred in this pot. Eighteen thousand between these two players. You know, Andrew can't call much here he's got to make it super cheap if so but Scott Scott's gonna bet huge and just gonna instant fold I'm willing to bet yeah I think that's how it's gonna go yep okay not instant fold but not an instant fold but he is counterfeit maybe saving a little face right now really got the business look on his face look at that Wondering if Skydiver's maybe just making a move. With, like, a pair in one heart? Yeah, probably. Well, um, even so, it's losing, still losing to the ace-eights of the world with ace of hearts. Yep. Yeah, there's not much that you beat here for Andrew. He might be thinking about doing something crazy. Oh, we're thinking about doing something crazy, all right. Obviously, this runout is one of the most miserable for our exact hand. There's a potential flush out there, and while we were beating over pairs on the flop, the running 10s have us counterfeited. But we also have some pretty sweet blockers here. It's extremely unlikely that Scott has a full house here, since we have a removal to both pocket 4s and pocket 5s. And I know what you're thinking, Andrew, you'd always raise those hands on the flop, so you can't have them either. But would I? Yeah, strange board to lead out on, because it just definitely connects... A lot of the time with both players. I'm really surprised we didn't see a raise from Nimi, and wow. Because Nimi knew. He knew that the seven was coming. And you know what? I've watched a lot of Doug Polk videos in my time. Damn near all of them. Okay, probably all of them. And if Doug can be a world-beating hero, then goddamn it, so can I. It's time to put to work some of that world-beating advice that I've learned along the way. Good. And as a good rule, when the board is paired and you have a two-pair that counterfeits both pairs... If you're ever going to bluff, that's the time to fire to pull the trigger because they are the least likely to have a hand that you're going to just run into and get coolered. If he shipped it here, I would just I'd, I'd lose my mind. Andrew's got game for sure. Wow. Ooh. And he puts in the raise. Oh, man. Insta call by Scott Snap Scott. Snap called. Wow. That right there is a very high-level play by Andrew. He blocks. He has the bottom pairs locked up. He has all the sets in his range at this point. After thinking this hand through later on, I think I made a mistake here. I think what I need to do is move up in stakes to where they respect my raises. Not a call. Wow, he does call. call. Let's see if you're right, Grant. He turns over his hand. And it is 8-6, so wow, look at that. He's flopped the straight. Give me one sec while I fix a couple things here. Okay. And perfect. Hey, I mean, Nimi uh, is communicating that he's not scared to... Uh, oh, yeah, he's not scared to, to put it in there, here. man. That it's, just, it's so deflating, though, when you try to make your one kind of complex play of yeah. the night, and, and it just... Matthew Barch, thanks for the shout out, by the way. Oh. Calling station content on the way. Mr. Matt Barch, how you been, buddy? That's, He's the other guy. That is the other guy. I've definitely uh, played with Salvador him. Salvador Cervantes and, and Mr. Matt Barch. I definitely played with Matt. In this hand, playing 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, which is normal. Action folds over to me, and we raise it up with Ace King off suit and make it $250 to go. To you, Mr. I 20. Shout out to the best interstate in the country, Interstate 20. I don't know if that's true, but. I grew up off of I twenty, so I'm biased. Uh, but they do have they have a good they do have a good blog, entertaining stuff. 
Yeah. Bunch nah. of big hands here. Bunch of big hands. Ace, big slick gets called by eights and sevens, both trying to set mine. JD putting in the squeeze with queen. And Bear wakes up with aces. Everyone gets aces. Let's go. Four bet to $4,000 after a three bet by JD. Cold four bet in the straddle. And Andrew Nimi is like, well, wow. ace king off. This Doesn't is... feel as comfy. No. Seeing that, uh, but he's also seen Bear kind of spaz out a little bit with kind of like three six suited earlier. And so if you're Brad, what do you, what oh, do you man. do? I mean, this is rough. As if I wasn't running bad enough, I get called Brad by Ben in the commentary booth. With the two calls and then a three bet squeeze, we were super stoked because it would have been an easy four bet jam with our 5.1K stack when it got back to me. Bear beats me to it though with a four bet to $4,000. This, my friends, is an exercise in perspective. We can be angry at the world for giving me Ace King versus Aces when I'm in Stuck City, Texas. Or we can be thankful that JD found the squeeze play, which then made Bear's re-raise a little more face up. Because otherwise, if JD just flatted with his hand, Bear would three bet, and we'd have an easy four bet jam right into the aces. Oh, Ace King offsuit. He's more concerned about yeah, JD. Yeah, oh, I I'm so glad he folded. Honestly, because like there are still there are too many people behind you. They could hold you. They could be holding your outs. Ace King's not going to hold up that much. And wow, is Umit? Oh my oh, god, I thought he was. I totally thought he was going to call with the sevens. We know that the seven was coming on the flop. We know that was happening. The JD, I don't think, can it's call 2,800 more with Queen Jack no, suited. No, he's going to let it go. And Bear actually getting a pretty good profit with Two, aces there. $2,000 Two profit. Geez. Uncontested. Uncontested. <laughs> they decide to fold there. Whenever Bear, a player like Bear comes in and cold fours over... You're open. We find pocket queens on the very next deal and raise it up to $125 over the $40 straddle. Brad calls on the button and Scott defends on the straddle. In the middle with 10-9 suited, a hand that could easily crack these two premiums. Going three-way to the flop. See something crazy, dealer. That ain't the one. Nobody's happy about that flop. Maybe Brad. Brad could take this away from Andrew here. Andrew does have the best hand, but it is a second pair. I like his decision to go ahead and see bet here. Checking or betting this flop seems reasonable, but at this point, we are in no mood for passivity. He just folds the ace jack there. That's kind of surprising, honestly. Maybe just with me, if Mr. Um, Dad talking here got to go home. <laughs> I saw dude talking in the chat back again. Uh, I'm uh, assuming Mr. Youngblood. you're... Mike Youngblood, make yourself known. Zach opening it to 80, Queen 10 suited. Skydiver Scott, it's suited, oh he calls. Oh, my God, and more, just all the premiums for everybody. Everyone gets a premium at least twice on the TCH Dallas. <laughs> this is just crazy. Uh, Andrew here, big slick on the button. You got to love life here. Uh, Going to put in a squeeze. I like it a lot. Big size. <clears throat> My, uh, yeah, big size. Perfect. I thought it, I thought it was only going to be like two. In this hand, we see an under-the-gun raise from Zach and two calls before we looked down at ace-king suited on the button. We're picking a number that seems big to me, $480, but you guys know the drill by now. Looks like Zach really thinking about it. Going to go ahead and uh, make the call here. If clubs come, this could uh, this get pretty expensive for Zach. This is going to get real gross. Yeah, Scott Aver, wow. Scott calls and Nate calls. And all, Andrew's got to be rolling his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, really? Wow. Yeah, ace king not something you want to play multi way. Definitely a heads up kind of hand until you flop top pair. Uh, however, and it doesn't matter because two people just flopped a flush. That is, this is the most disgusting flop I've ever seen. I mean, and these that two guys have thirty thousand so, dollars between them. Yeah, the mu Oh my god, we might see another thirty a thirty k pot at a two five game. Nate's what's, got a lead what's here. What's happening? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> what's happening is that things are not looking pretty. I don't think Andrew can fold yet. In fact, a raise wouldn't even be crazy to try and deny equity from diamond draws. And he Typically in a three-bet pot, you're looking to play for stacks with your value hands. It definitely gets weird here when Nate gets checked to and then leads into me. We can't possibly fold our hand at this point. Life right now. This Puts hand is flat bonkers. This is, this is bonkers is the word for $4, it. $4,400 pot. Andrew has got a lot of catching up to do. Oh, he has, yeah. That's one wow, of the that's cards. One of his, that's one of them. He's now drawing to an ace. Uh, I doubt 
Wow. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he makes it to the river. Wow. Here. Yeah. No, it's uh, the only way that this isn't going to make it to the river if Nate decides to slow play here. Um, he has 0% chance to win this hand. However, I do like his decision to go ahead and continue. <sighs> Big bet here Big from bet. Nate. He's value yep. owning himself a bit. He Just doesn't know it. He doesn't know. Six skydive hundred. flopped it. SPR, Andrew going, SPR for Andrew is basically like you've got to ship yeah, it in here. I think I think so. Fold. I think so. Honestly, I think Andrew just gets felted here, man. This is rough. The turn is a disastrous one for me because not only does it keep us in front of a hand like Ace Jack with the Jack of Diamonds, it removes a bunch of combinations of hands that I was losing to on the flop. Ace five and pocket fives are much less likely now. With a bet of 1,600 and me essentially having about twice that much left in my stack, another flat call seems out of the question at this point. So to me, it feels like my fate is sealed. This is called, yep, there he is, chips it. Skydiver. And Skydiver, Skydiver trying to keep his pants on. Can, <laughs> can, I get a count, can I get a count, please? Like you're not already, no, you're calling? Yeah. And when Skydiver's got calls wow. here, it screams strength to Nate. Oh, He's yeah. Like, if he well, flat calls, it's insane. And... I just – I can't – There's no way he ships I here, right? I can't uh, – Because he's only I, getting I would by. really, really hope he doesn't just for his own sake, but I don't know, man. Yeah, Matthew, imagine having 10 high flush and having 0% equity. Yeah, that's not a fun feeling. Yeah, that's not a good one. Oh, man. All the money. Hey, let's it put some one-times in. in the chat for uh, Andrew. For Andrew. If you're Ace a fan of Andrew. The river. He's got a 10%. He's actually got – Pretty decent odds. Oh, any five, any ace. <laughs> so about as good as you could hope for, I guess, in this seriously. situation. And wow. And yep, Skydiver does flat call. Nate probably Nate just, might just so he might just ship it. Which honestly, I would. Twelve thousand in the pot right here. He's yeah. got a pot size bet. I don't know. There is still plenty of um, poker left to play on the river. Actually, I take it back. I like the flat call much better. So almost a fourteen thousand dollar pot. This is the one Andrew needs to win. He's been waiting for this one all night. But, yep. Uh, yep. There's a uh, one time. One time. I'll give for him the my one, one time. time. What happened? Oh, they oh, they both just flat called. Do so. No help. Like five. To Mister Nimi, skydiver. Wow. The oh, pair, the skydiver. Pair board. Skydiver like really missed out on some value there. I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand how he could have done anything different, honestly. But man, I what, can't believe two people flopped a flush top pair top kicker for Andrew Nimi. When that the, uh, is ridiculous. Look at those chip. Look at all of them. Fourteen thousand dollar pot headed over to Skydiver Scott. Scott he's as if no, he needed it. He's no stranger to huge pots with weird hands. God. Uh, the deuce. Woo. Uh, man, a good Phew. game to uh, Andrew Nimi and Brad Owen. Uh, Andrew, not the result he was looking for. No, not at all. Class act, though. Class and, act. Uh, Takes it on the chin like a man. Unfortunate. Ace King suited versus Jack seven yeah, and ten eight and suited. And ten eight suited. They, I can't flush believe over they, flush. I can't believe they both flopped a flush. That's. Do you know how unlikely that is? <laughs> it's like yeah. it's so unlikely. So this actually ends up being, uh, I think, my biggest loss in a live game. Um, Originally bought in for the 5K, added on 2,500 uh, around that last hour that I came back after the booth. That last hour after the booth, disaster. <sighs> what does there say? I mean, I knew it was gonna be swingy. I knew it was gonna be a swingy night. Swings in both directions. Variance is gonna be massive as it always is when you come and play in Texas. Uh, there was good action, but then just ran into a couple tough spots. Put in that bluff that I thought was a good spot and ended up getting snapped off. So, doesn't feel great to fly out to Texas and book your biggest loss, but life goes on. Um, always going to be pushing myself to play bigger and bigger, and uh, I'm sure there's things to learn and take away from this session. Meetup game is tomorrow, who knows, maybe we can chisel away at the loss, and uh, life goes on. <laughs>